Wow. I didn't say anything yet, but thank you. Um, uh, okay, I'm not a film critic. Anyone here knows a lot more about movies than I do. Uh, I'm an immigration scholar, so um, I'm going to discuss a couple of thoughts about the movie from the point of view of immigration. And I have my device here to... So, all right. Um, there are several types of immigrants. From the point of view of immigration, the brother is a refugee, really clear cut. He's escaping slavery, of all things, right? So, um, let me first discuss a little bit what this means. Um, the definition of refugee accepted internationally was established by uh, a UN convention in 1951. And uh, it's uh, the, the same definition we use in the U.S., adopted by Congress in the Immigration Nationality Act. A refugee, a refugee is someone who's, who has a well-founded fear of persecution in the country they are escaping from. Am I fine here, or you want me to... S okay. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Um, uh, and this fear is, this persecution is for reasons of race or ethnicity or religion, nationality, belonging to a particular group or political opinion or activity, and these people are outside their country of origin. Um, and are somewhere in the world, often in places run by the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, and looking to be resettled somewhere. Um, once a country accepts a refugee for resettlement, they have to follow the principle of no refoulement. That means they cannot send them back to the place where they were in danger. Um, uh, just a little technicality. The, l the, the only difference between a refugee and someone who has been granted asylum is that the refugee is admitted while this person is abroad. Asylum is granted to someone who arrives in the country and once in the country asks to be l allowed to stay. Um, but the definition is the same. They have to meet the same criteria. So technically then the brother, if he applied, would be an asylee. Um, I'm going to skip the top part of this slide uh, and go straight to the bottom to give you an idea of about numbers in the year 2017. Uh, we admitted uh, near 54,000 refugees. Um, the three leading countries of origin were the demographic, the demographic, democratic, excuse me, Republic of the Congo, Iraq, and Syria. Uh, and we uh, admitted an additional 25,000 or so um, as asylees. Uh, these were the, the the main countries of origin for these were China, El Salvador, and Guatemala. In 2018, the numbers plummeted to about 20. Thousand uh, refugees. The U.S. is the leading country for resettlement of refugees in the world by a large margin. So the the figure here uh, shows you um, admissions of refugees in selected years since 2000, and you see that the U.S. clearly has traditionally led the pack. I'm going to skip that one. All right. The brother. Um, so, what an endearing character. I mean, he, it's like you cannot not love this guy and not be on his side from day one, right? So let's see, his, uh, his reactions at the beginning are very typical of any refugee. Um, well, symbolically, he crash lands on Ellis Island, of all places. Uh, and, y and you know, he's scared. He's initially he's scared and ap apprehensive. Then, uh, okay, finds his way to Manhattan, and 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 we see the cultural shock that all immigrants go through. Right? He's walking around. He's wearing funny clothes, and he has no idea they are funny. But people are looking at him. 
They talk to him, he's not sure what they are saying. He's hungry and he doesn't know how things work, work in this society, so he sees food and it's like, oh, food. And, and then he realizes, oh, you need this green paper to get the food. So the green paper is in this machine, let's get green paper. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Um, but he picks it up very quickly. Um, something he understands very clearly is what the cop that comes after him represents. He, he's escaping himself, right, from, from a place where law enforcement was after him too. But when it comes to, okay, how, how he integrates himself into the society, or we, what we used to call assimilation, or, or often people refer to as assimilation, he turns out to be a natural, really. Um, well, like, like all works of fiction, you need some suspension of disbelief, right? So he magically understands English, everything that people tell him. Not every refugee would understand everything, or not every immigrant would understand everything they are told. Um, he doesn't speak, so he doesn't have an accent, and he looks like a local. So for 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 the folks in the bar and in other places, he passes by a local, only that he's extremely weird. I mean, you have to diagnose him. Is he crazy? Is he a wino? Is he? Um, but but it's uh, clear that he he gets integrated well in his own you know, way. Harlem for him, even though Harlem in the 1980s may have not been, you know, paradise, for him is a safe haven. I mean, for refugees that are escaping inferno, I mean, most places are, you know, like, great. And, and he's clearly <coughs> grateful for uh, being where he ended up being, and soon he starts contributing to society. Turns out he has these skills. He can fix things, and he can fix people too. And, uh, and he starts uh, contributing and, and doing things for others, and he even gets involved in trying to do something about the, the drug nightmare that uh, that place was at the moment. Then if we look at the locals, the attitudes towards uh, the, the brother, I mean, they are curious, right? They are, and they are friendly. They are basically friendly towards him. Um, there is a little bit of, okay, Walt, Walter has a little bit of that fear of the stranger because of, you know, uh, he talks about germs that can come from space and things like that, but it's, it's only uh, a, 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 a marginal comment and he's not really thinking about the brother apparently. And so overall, um, they welcome him. And the state welcomes him. The government with the welfare agency, etc. Um, the the state is maybe not the most efficient actor. There was a remember the woman complaining about the the case manager that was gone. Um, but overall, we get a we get a picture of a welcoming crowd and an state that is involved in trying to make his life better and the life of other people or the lives of other people in his situation better. Um, the locals like, like him so much that they fight for him, right? So, um, I'll get back to this situation, but for now, let's say, well, we have, we have a very nice guy that is in need of protection, um, who is basically welcomed here, um, and who pulls his weights too, right? Um, I'm going to connect this with the basic idea I want you to go home with, that is, um, we tend to have 
we tend to think, or many people think, that the American public feels worse about immigration and is more hostile towards immigrants than it really is. Uh, in my own research, I've been studying public opinion on refugees and on refugee admissions since the beginning of opinion polling in the 1930s. And I, uh, and I just give you a couple of small pieces of information. Uh, overall, when you ask people, should we, or do you support or oppose the admission of refugees from Kurchatovia, wherever, any place? Um, Americans have more often than not said that they oppose the admission of refugees. Um, now, the margin of difference between those who oppose and those who support has been shrinking over time a lot. During the 20th century, it was the 24, that there is a minus sign before the numbers, if you noticed, and that's important because of the order in which I wrote things there. But in the 20th century, the average um, difference was 24 percent points, and since 1999, in the surveys that I found since then, uh, the average difference is just seven. It turns out that when you ask people more complex questions, or when you give people more information, you get more support for refugee admissions. For example, imagine a question, and this is very close to an actual question from the uh, 1970s, a question that says, the government uh, is proposing to admit 14,000 Indo-Chinese refugees. Do you think that number is too high, is too low, or is about right? When you offer people that about right, that or, or word it in any way you want, some kind of middle option, a lot of people choose the middle option. Now, if you consider the middle option as, okay, people are willing to accept refugees because they are saying the number is about right. If they didn't want refugees, they would tell you fewer than that. They have the option to say less. Then when we ask questions this way, we get the opposite. We get that most people are, are willing to accept refugees. And I could go on, go on and on, but I'm gonna give you one example of something pretty interesting. When people are asked about specific government policies, um, they, or, or other questions in which they have to picture the actual situation of refugees, they tend to, that tends to trigger what I call a sympathy effect. For example, um, don't worry too much about the numbers, I, I, I just tell you the story. Uh, in, in the early 1990s, there was a coup d'etat in Haiti, and a lot of social and political turmoil followed, and a lot of people reached, or tried to reach Florida by boats, rafts, etc. Uh, the, uh, the US government had a policy of trying to intercept them and s at sea and send them to Guantanamo and decide later what to do with them. And, and, but many reach Florida and then uh, uh, at some point a policy that was uh, discussed was, uh, okay, how about sending them back without a, a hearing, without even a hearing, right? So when you ask people, when, when pollsters at the time ask people, do you oppose or do you support or oppose accepting immigrants from Haiti? At least 63% and up to 74%, depending on the survey of respondents, they would say that they oppose accepting immigrants from Haiti. They didn't want immigrants from Haiti. But when a question said, okay, the government is proposing to send them back without even a hearing. Do you support this policy or do you oppose this policy? Only 51% supported that policy. And when you think about it, what could be a more straightforward translation of your opposition to accepting Haitian refugees than denying them the hear a hearing and sending them back? I mean, that seems pretty straightforward. But when people were asked the actual question, they weren't so opposed to accepting the immigrant refugees, the Haitian refugees, apparently. And like that, I found other examples in the history of uh, opinion polling on refugees. So, um, if we talk about immigration in general, 
when surveys ask people, when surveys ask respondents, what should we do about all the unauthorized immigrants in the country, 11 million people or so. Um, one of the options is always round them up and deport them all. That's always one of the options that people are given in the question. Um, the percent that pick that option is usually 20 to 25 percent, and almost never more than 30 percent. When people are asked if there should be some legalization program for all the undocumented immigrants, the majority invariably support some kind of legalization program. In the last Gallup question, uh, Gallup asks regularly a question like this, and in their last survey, that was just a couple months ago, the question was, uh, would you support a program for a path to citizenship for all illegal immigrants in the country, provided that they meet certain criteria? 81% said yes. So what happens, oh, I thought I had moved on. Yeah what, hap yeah, what happens is that we hear the loudest voices and we hear the most emotionally charged voices and sometimes we, hear, we, we think that they represent the majority. Um, the majority of people in the country want some kind of legalization for the uh, the uh, unauthorized immigration problem or illegal immigration problem. They also want, granted, they also want uh, illegal immigration to stop in the future. They also want so-called border security or some kind of solution so that we don't find ourselves in the same situation in two decades. Um, but uh, Americans have you know, a positive view of immigration. Gallup and other pollsters also ask questions about things like, questions like, do you think immigration contributes positively to society, negatively or neither? Positively wins over negatively by 20 to 30 percentage points, invariably, in all these surveys. Um, when people are asked about um, DACA, if the children of immigrants who were brought in the country without documents when, the, when they were children and grew up here, if they should be legalized, more than 70% of people say yes to that. So um, if we go back to the movie then, and to what I was describing at the beginning, the movie kind of presents a, maybe a rosy, maybe an ideal picture where we have this ideal immigrant um, who, who wants to fit in who is friendly and nice and pulls his weights, contributes, etc. And we have the locals that embrace him and that welcome him. Uh, we are not seeing really something extremely unrealistic. Um, so the the uh, the media is often vilified for, you know, some media at least. Uh, some some news organizations, if one in 10 million immigrants kills somebody somewhere, they make sure you hear about it. Um, but, but the media in general also makes the plight of refugees closer to people, I think, when we see images and we see the stories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and I think that has a little bit of, a, of an effect on how people feel about uh, what we should do as a country, because after all, there is a reason why the U.S. is the main destination and a safe haven for refugees, and it has been so historically. Um, and that's all I prepare. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Mariana Sana. Yeah.